Because where does the scientific revolution come from? Why does it happen when and where it happens? What are the ideas percolating through society at that point in time? Where are those ideas being discussed and debated and written about? Well, the scientific revolution comes out of the Renaissance. And the Renaissance is the discovery, is the rediscovery of Aristotle. It's the rediscovery of not just Aristotle, but the whole Greek approach to life. Whether it's Greek art, whether it's the idea of science, whether it's the whole Greek attitude, as reflected in, you know, to me, as reflected in Michelangelo's David, that confidence, man, on earth is able and competent and can do stuff and can go out there and execute. It's Aquinas who a few hundred years earlier had brought Aristotle firmly into the Catholic Church. I mean, Aristotle had been floating around the West for a while. But Aquinas put him firmly into the Western, into the Western canon, into Western thought, and particularly in Italy. And so accident, the Renaissance happens in Italy, where people for the first time, because of Aquinas, are using reason to evaluate the world. And, and then because of Aquinas accepting the secular nature of the world, so that when they discover the Greeks, they don't reject them automatically. They embrace them. And what you get in the 15th, 16th, 17th centuries is the rediscovery of the operating system. I mean, it would be discovered maybe by Aquinas and those who followed him. But in those later centuries, its application is rediscovered. Its consistent application to every realm in life is discovered. Its philosophy manifest, the philosophical idea of reason, the philosophical idea of this is how we know the world, now applied to real issues, real problems of human survival, of human life, and human progress. And the scientific revolution is probably the most important of that, those manifestations. And it launches an era known as the age of reason. It launches an era known as the Enlightenment. You know, think about Newton. What, early 18th century, late 17th century, right? About the same time as John Locke. Same part of the same revolution, the age of reason. So it is reason, the rediscovery of our capacity to understand the world, the validity of our senses, the validity of reality. Reality is what it is. A is A. And our ability to understand our reality, integrate that knowledge, abstract, create abstractions, and better understand the world through those abstractions. That ability that is uniquely human, that is what the operating system that makes these apps possible. That's what makes the scientific revolution possible. And I would argue that that's what made meaningful competition possible. Because while he talks about competition, I mean, there's competition in Eastern Europe. There's competition in Africa. There's competition in parts of the Middle East where they weren't dominated completely by one empire. There were competition in India, I think. There were lots of little kingdoms. It's not the competition in and of itself. What the competition did is, or what the fragmentation did, the political fragmentation did, is it allowed, it let this rediscovery of reason flourish. It let the operating system work. It let people figure out the bugs. It let people experiment. And as a consequence, part of the consequence, you get the scientific revolution.